Poor uh, Gene Cernan, on May 17th, when the Atlas failed and uh, plunged the Agena target vehicle into the sea a few hundred miles uh, southeast of here, Cernan, uh, who was usually a rather restrained man, uh, said, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And uh, Stafford was alleged to have said, oh, shucks. Uh, what Stafford said today, or is going to be alleged to have said today, uh, we haven't had a report on as yet. Stafford has now gone up that elevator five times for one launch. Uh, as he said earlier, he's got more elevator time than almost anybody here at the Cape, and he probably has. I doubted it when he said that after four times because there were some of the Mercury fellows uh, who did uh, almost as badly uh, with various scrubs, but Stafford certainly is the champion by today of uh, scrub missions. He had uh, that first Gemini 6 mission was scrubbed, as you know, when the Agena uh, blew itself apart. Uh, that was in November. And then in uh, December, they finally got off. Uh, or rather, first of all, of course, they had that uh, shutdown of the engine uh, after ignition time, actually, and gave us all the bad moment when Sharon and Stafford uh, were up there in their spacecraft. And uh, then finally, they did get off on the third attempt in Gemini 6. This is now the uh, third attempt for Gemini 9. I was trying to explain to you a little earlier that those launch windows, and uh, it occurs to me that with all of those computers he's got up at the IBM Center in New York, Jack Siegel might be able to do it better. Jack? Well, Walter, I don't know if we can do it any better, but we'll certainly try with this one computer display that we have right here. We have put onto the 2250 display tube a circle indicating the orbital path of the ATDA. Now, let's move that circle so we're looking at it more or less from an edge and put the Earth in the center. Here is the equator, and you'll see the orbital path proceeding over top of the Earth. Here is the United States and we'll shrink down from the orbital path a dotted line representing the path that the target traces on the surface of the Earth, and we'll put in the latitude of Cape Kennedy where the vehicles are launched from. So you can see immediately that if the object uh, was launched at this point or at this point, it would be able to enter immediately onto the same orbital plane as the target vehicle. The object is to get into rendezvous using a minimum amount of fuel so now let's take this one step further and we'll put on a dot representing the ATDA. And you'll see that as the ATDA is moving around the Earth, the Earth is also moving. So you have the problem of trying to launch at the exact proper moment when you can get into the same plane of the target and also to launch at the proper moment so you won't be either ahead or too far behind of that moving target. Now with the computer, we can stop the rotation of the Earth here. So let's shift to uh, another display now, and we'll show you the position frozen, and say here is the ATDA at the intended moment of launch. Here is a launch, and you'll see there is an angle if they launched at this point in between the two planes. NASA can make some correction by inserting yaw steering into the second stage of the uh, Gemini and come a little closer but you still have a wedge angle. Now, actually, we've greatly exaggerated those angles, Walter. In the last mission, it was only 0 0.05 of a difference in the angle between the target plane and in the plane of the Gemini. But you still must get in as close as possible to that exact plane. You have to get to the proper position in front or in back of it. And you also have other uh, problems. You want to be able to go in so that your rendezvous will occur in this case, at darkness, so they're able to have the sky, the stars above when they were coming in for that first rendezvous. All these factors enter in to the problems involved in launch window, and it's mainly a matter of fuel. If they had unlimited fuel, they could launch at practically any time and rendezvous at any time. Any other questions, Walter? Uh, not for the moment, Jack. I've got a lot of them, but we'll uh, come back and talk about those uh, a little bit later. We do have confirmation now, down here now, uh, that, uh, that uh, Tom Stafford indeed did say, again today, as he did May 17th, aw shucks, uh, when uh, he heard that this mission was scrubbed. 
CBS News color coverage of Gemini 9 will continue in a moment. Is there a book that tells how to get children to brush their teeth regularly? We changed to a toothpaste that's meant to reduce cavities. I can't stand the taste of my toothpaste. We have the same problem. You need anti-cavity Colgate. Children love its taste. And when dental scientists compared Colgate with the best-known fluoride, their report, published in the Journal of the American Society of Dentistry for Children, confirmed Colgate unsurpassed in reducing new cavities. Get anti-cavity Colgate today. Now, you can keep talking, Madge. I can clean the floor while I'm on the phone. No, there's nothing to it. I'm using the white tornado. You know, eject liquid. Ammonia? Oh, it's got lots more ammonia than that green stuff. And believe me, where ammonia counts, Ajax means less work. How can I tell about the ammonia in Ajax? By the smell. This is Walter Cronkite back at our CBS News Space Center at Cape Kennedy. Let's recount for you for a moment what has gone on here this morning at the Cape, in case you missed any part of it, or perhaps you've gotten a little bit confused about it, which would be certainly understandable. At 10 o'clock this morning, uh, just about two hours ago, Eastern Standard Time, uh, the Atlas Agena, uh, the Atlas rather, boosted uh, the substitute target vehicle, substituting for the Agena, boosted it into a perfect orbit, almost exactly 185 statute miles high. It was a perfect launch under cloudy skies here at the Cape. The weather had given us some concern, but it cooperated enough to get the launch off. The target vehicle went into a perfect orbit. There is still some concern that perhaps it did not uh, jettison the fairing, uh, the cover that protects the target vehicle during the launch phase of its flight uh, and has to jettison if the target vehicle is to uh, serve its function of a, a target uh, for docking in space. The uh, uh, an hour and 38 minutes later, on that perfect orbit, uh, the target vehicle was due over Cape Kennedy. Still did not know whether the fairing had been jettisoned, but at least it was up there and could be used as a rendezvous vehicle, if not a docking vehicle. And all of the technical considerations other than the indicator light on the fairing itself indicated that the jettison had taken place. So everything looked good up to that point. But then, with just 5 minutes and 47 seconds of the proper window to put the Titan, uh, the Gemini, into its exact orbit, there came a malfunction in the radio guidance system, apparently, and they had to scrub this mission until Friday morning. Meanwhile, however, surveyors still okay and on the way to the moon. CBS News will take the air at 2 a.m. EDT for the landing on the moon. This is Walter Cronkite at Cape Kennedy. The Week in Space, CBS News' selective color coverage of the mission of Gemini 9 and Project Surveyor. This is CBS. <laughs>